Live, local, late breaking. Channel 7 News at 6 starts now. And still ahead in Wayne Friedman's notebook, really worth a thousand words. You'll see why and how they became a best-selling Live, local, late breaking. Channel 7 News at 6 starts now. And still ahead in Wayne Friedman's notebook, the pictures that are really worth a thousand words. You'll see why and how they became a best-selling book. Thank you, Martin. Thanks, Martin. We're coming up next, one of our Wayne Friedman's favorite stories. He tells us how these famous pictures were developed all by one man who stumbled upon them. And finally tonight, the heartwarming story of an Irishman, one who illuminates the history of his people through a book filled with photographs that were once long forgotten. We have a story and the pictures that make it from the pages of Wayne Friedman's notebook. As we near the end of the 20th century, it might be said that humans have come a long way, or have we? Now that we're freed of the land, most of us live in cities, concrete places with sharp corners and hard edges. They're not the most natural environments, but we've grown accustomed to them. We're all governed by economic factors. You can't always follow your heart. You've got to look after the pocket. And so, when Jerry Mullins makes his way through our modern world, a part of him yearns for what the Irish would call a soft day. Oh, a soft day is when it's neither raining nor the sun is shining. It's just kind of misty and overcast, but gentle, gentle on the, on the body. These are pictures of Ireland taken in 1954 by Dorothea Lang, an American whose name will never be as well known as her work and who wouldn't have wanted it any other way. She looked for people to photograph who could speak for themselves without speaking. These are faces which spoke through her lens during America's Depression, Times have changed, but the images endure. They've become icons, part of a nation's collective memory. They're so disturbing that her son, Daniel Dixon, only displays a few on the wall of his study. She knew the work was important. She wouldn't be surprised by all this stuff? I think that she would be somewhat surprised by the fact that she had become legendary. Years later, Dorothea Lange's negatives have become national treasures. They're stored at the Library of Congress, the National Archives, and in this vault at the Oakland Museum, where, mixed in with all her American work, Jerry Mullins stumbled upon 2,400 negatives from the county where his father grew up in Ireland. It wasn't just that I, I came across this great collection of photographs, but it was wonderful to think that very few people knew anything about the photograph. They'd been part of an assignment for Life magazine, one which Lang wanted, and the magazine did not. But when speaking with an editor, she could be very persuasive. The people related to their land and their customs and their culture and the fact that it was threatened. There was a, an impending tragedy there that might vanish before very much longer. So were they then much younger Daniels who write the captions. Lang spent four weeks in County Clare documenting the soft Irish days. But for all the time they spent, life only printed 19 of the pictures. The rest of her negatives spent 40 years in the dark until Jerry Mullins came along. It's a bit like looking through these pictures. It's like watching a movie. or It's even more personal than that. It's probably like looking at uh, a home movie. For two years, Jerry went back to Ireland again and again through the contact prints in this room. The nameless people in the photographs became his friends. When I came along here, I got such a great joy that my initial motivation was to share that joy with a lot of other people, that other people should be able to see these pictures, not just me. I understand Jerry Mullins does not have much money to speak of. He shares a San Francisco flat with some friends, but he took it in his mind to publish the pictures in a book and that was that. What got into him? He's an Irishman. Jerry took copies of the prints yeah. back home to County Clare. He wandered the countryside, looking to connect the places and the people in his pictures. This is Michael Keneally. As Lang shot him at age 24, and here as Jerry found him on the same farm at age 64. The faces he'd come to know so well became stories. Bridie O'Halloran, 
the girl looks like an angel. Her face is just shiningly beautiful. And of course, she's wearing a, a white petticoat. And today, she's a middle-aged mother of five. When Jerry Mullins went to Ireland with Dorothea Lange's pictures, he illuminated the past. It's a statement of affection and respect for his own countrymen. In those faces, I see uh, humor. I see honor, uh, integrity, and I see uh, welcome. Last year, Jerry Mullins finally published his book, Dorothea Lange's Ireland. To everyone's surprise, it reached number three on that country's bestseller list. And then, in a most unexpected way, it gave back even more. The poor child had died two, two years after the picture was taken. The photograph had always been one of Dorothea Lange's favorites. She'd posted to the front door of her Berkeley home on rainy days, never knowing that the girl had died and that this was the only picture of her anyone had ever taken. Four decades later, thanks to the book, her family now has a remembrance. Oh, what a wonderful story. I didn't know that. To see him in the crowd, publishing a book has done nothing to change Jerry Mullen's life. He still follows his pocketbook through the concrete canyons. He still yearns for softer days. But in his heart, he knows he left a mark. And that's more than most of us will ever do. It just had to be done. I mean, it's like giving those people their pictures. It's like giving them back pictures that they, they should have had 40 years ago. And it's nice to be able to do that. It's like a gift. In San Francisco, Wayne Friedman, Channel 7 News. It's remarkable. Now, the paperback version of that uh, bestseller is due out with Dorothea Lange's photos, due out in January. Nice way to end, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, that is going to do.